Spring is in the air, and so is the Apple M3. This year's MacBook Air is no blast from MacBook Pro's past, despite the 13 and 15 inch form factors. For proof, just check out those ports, or lack thereof. The Air occupies a bit of a strange place in the MacBook lineup. It offers two sizes, just like the Pro, and unless you're getting the Powerhouse 16-inch Pro, they weigh about the same. But surely there are more differences beneath the surface. Let's dig into the 13-inch MacBook Air. Apple has perfected the art of sealing up these laptops with their specialized penelope screws, but at least the screws remain visible. No hunting under rubber feet for me. Here's hoping that right to repair bills like the one Oregon just passed help make these penelopes disappear. Four screws may seem like an easy procedure, but I assure you there are some seriously stubborn clips doing most of the work. A suction handle and some prying gets you most of the way, but the final touch is sliding the case away from the hinge. I love that there's no adhesive to worry about, but this kind of procedure is just begging for a guide. First stop inside, depower the device. That means two screws, a bracket, and a connector. But that's not all. The trackpad cable is also routed over the battery, so we'll need to dispatch that too. Some fairly light adhesive, and the battery is bared for removal. These rounded torque screw posts are doing double duty. They helped hold the case clips, and now they're securing the battery. There's just two more screws, and we can get to the good stuff. Stretch release adhesive. Just when you thought cleanly removable adhesive couldn't get any better, the M2 looped these finicky tabs to give you twice as many chances to remove them. The spacious case layout helps too. Nothing to snag on. I managed to get all four tabs wrapped around a spudger, and the evenly applied tension worked great. Bear in mind, these strips haven't yet been cooked by a fanless laptop for a couple years, but again, those horseshoes at least double your chances. The final test, is there adhesive at the top? None at all! The battery slides right out from under the logic board, no major disassembly needed. This 52.6 watt hour cell is a bit smaller compared to the MacBook Pro's nearly 70 watt hours, so that's probably where most light duty users will notice the difference. Speaking of differences, you didn't think we'd ignore the 15 inch air, did you? Well, maybe we should. There's not a lot of difference in here. The 15 inch is, well, larger. It has separate antennas with silver traces and heftier speakers. Its larger battery also has a couple more cells. And lucky for us, the 15-inch battery also has the updated procedure. Here's 66.5 watt-hours of air power. Ooh, sorry. Touchy subject. Okay, let's take a look at this Airhead's brains. First stop on the way to the logic board are the hinge covers. Wait, you know what? Let me get this trackpad cable out of the way before I rip it. This snazzy input is secured by 10 torque screws, which seems like a lot, but one, at least it's not adhesive, and two, all these screws allow for lots of fussy little shims, making for perfect alignment. Out pops the trackpad, and snuggled up to its 15-inch sibling, it looks pretty pint-sized. Aw, now where were we? Ah yes, the logic board. Which means removing brackets, because of course it does. Antenna brackets, hidden screw brackets, screws, more brackets, and out pop the combination speaker antennas. Okay, now the logic board. There are a lot of screws in here. I miss the framework's numbered steps. In this corner, we've got the Touch ID connector. Up here are some display cables. And the excellently still modular ports are right over here. Can't wait to dig these out. Oh, and one more connector, and the board lifts out. Lucky for you, this shield is clipped on. Bye-bye screws and off it pops. Hard to believe that this is what passes for a heatsink these days. Next up, the display. It's comforting to see that some things never change. Three comparatively hefty T8 Torx screws on each hinge. Oh, and don't forget to fully disconnect those cables. And the display hinges right off. Hard to port. Actually, these ports are quite easy to remove. A couple screws a piece and not a drop of glue to be found. The power port, USB-C's one and two, and surprise, the heroic auxiliary port. Oh, and the Touch ID sensor. These modular ports are great, but only if they actually work when you replace them. Right to repair bills are doing a great job requiring repair guides, which will help you get inside. But bills like Oregon's go even further by banning parts pairing. That means parts should be swappable without jumping through hoops. We want tech repair to be like auto repair. Lots of parts and lots of repair shop options. We don't want them to be like printers, where a manufacturer holds a kill switch if you don't pay your protection money. We love to see a thoughtfully designed device. And after we test for parts pairing, the M3 MacBook Air will likely earn a provisional repairability score of five out of 10. Without the gloom of parts pairing on the horizon, the future is looking beautifully fixable. As always, keep on fixing.